This video will describe how to make these MDF glue-up jigs with T-channel inserts that are used to glue up these multi-layer laminate discs to produce my Dizzy Bowl projects. This video is a follow-up to my previous video entitled Dizzy Bowl Glue-Up Jigs that describe the history of the development of these uh, jigs for the purposes of gluing up these laminate discs, rotating each disc a small amount and gluing them up that they don't slip and slide during the glue-up process. In this previous video, I described a final version of these angle brackets which slide in these T-channel slots in the MDF disc. However, I've once again revised these L brackets with a new design that uses these quarter-inch diameter metal pins. And these new brackets will be used in this video to produce these MDF glue-up jigs. This is the second video of the, of the series which describes how you can make these MDF jigs with T-channel inserts for use with these L brackets. A third video will follow this video describing how I made these L brackets with round metal pins that slide into T-channel slots using my uh, metal mini mill. A fourth and final video will demonstrate how these jigs are used to glue up the laminate discs for the production of the Dizzy Bowl projects. I will also demonstrate how these same jigs can be used to glue up multiple layers of segmented discs for segmented disc projects. The glue-up jigs for this project are made from 3 quarter inch round MDF discs with slots dadoed into the surface for the insertion of aluminum T-channel inserts. I made three sizes of discs to enable the gluing up of laminate discs from 2 inches in diameter up to 10 inches in diameter. I've now revised these jigs by allowing the aluminum T-channel to overhang the MDF disc by about 1 inch on each side. This modification enables the gluing up of laminate discs to the full diameter of the MDF disc by enabling the thumb screws to engage a T-channel on the outside edge of the board. I will be making a moldable 6-inch, 8-inch, and 10-inch MDF disc for this video. I use more than one jig because I am routinely gluing up more than one set of discs at a time. While one set of discs is setting up with glue, I will be setting up a second and third set of discs. By the time the third set is set up, I can then go back to the first set and add additional disc. It just saves time. I began the process of making these jigs by cutting up a sheet of 3 quarter inch MDF into multiple 6 inch, 8 inch, and 10 inch squared boards. I will next take these MDF boards and dado in slots to accept the aluminum T-channel on my routing table. I'm now ready to cut my two channels into my MDF board to accept my aluminum uh, T-slot channel. Now this channel is just a little over 3 quarter inch wide and about 3 8 of an inch deep. And notice on the board I've put two marks on two adjacent edges. And those are the two edges which will always go against my fence as I'm cutting my dados for this T-slot. So there's no variation in, in the position uh, where it's going to cut because I am cutting multiple cuts through this board. The bit that I'm using on my router is a 3 quarter inch carbide end router. It is slightly smaller than the width of the T channel. I'll be cutting two channels at 90 degrees to each other on each of the boards. So as not to overload the router, I'm making multiple cuts on the router, increasing the depth of each subsequent cut until I've cut a data which is slightly deep, deeper than the thickness of the T channel material. I'll then need to move the fence of the router very slightly to enlarge the width of the slot to get the exact thickness of the T-channel material. Here I'm raising the height of the router bit to cut a deeper data.
Notice that in the last step I moved this fence back a small amount, just a couple thousandths, to enlarge the width of the data, just you know, maybe three, four thousandths. It was just enough for this T-slot to fit in there. Pretty snugly, but you still be able to move. And it's a hair below the top surface of the board. So I'll next be cutting pieces and then gluing them into the channel. So let me go and cut the other boards. And now turn my boards upside down and I mark the exact center of the board and I'll draw a circle. The exact diameter of the disc, in this case it's a six inch disc. And then I'll take these discs to my scroll saw and cut them just outside the line and then I'll sand to the line. Okay, I'm ready to cut my round disc out on my scroll saw, and I typically cut just outside the line, and I'll sand to the line uh, on my head sander or belt sander. Well, next go ahead and cut out all the remaining discs round. Okay, next I'm going to sand these discs to the line. I, I prefer to use my edge sander, I could also use a, a disc sander, but the edge sander is a little bit faster. The disc is now perfectly round. In a likewise manner, I'll now stand the remaining disc. Okay, I'm now ready to cut my T-slot channels to fit in these pieces. And I want it to overhang each of the discs by an inch. So my disc is six inches. I need one piece eight inches. And these two pieces will be Three and a half inches. So I need uh, one eight inch and two three and a half for each of my six inch discs. So let me go cut those on my saw. And my saw cuts are a little bit rough, so I'm going to sand this on my 2-inch belt grinder sander. So I have all my disc with the dados all, all cut. I have all my T-channels cut to the right length. And so now I'm ready to glue these uh, T-channels into the MDF boards. And I'll be using epoxy to glue these in place. And to glue them in place, I cut some, uh, some disc the exact width of the channels so that I can use spring clamps to clamp them down and keep them nice and straight. So I'll be putting a piece there, here, and here and using spring clamps to clamp them down. So let me mix up some epoxy and we'll start gluing these up. And I am using the West epoxy system once again.
The epoxy is soaking into the dado on the MDF boards, so I'm applying a liberal coat of the epoxy to the dado surface. I'm actually applying several coats of the epoxy as it soaks into the MDF board. I'm also applying epoxy to the edges of the dado where the sides of the T-slide channel will be in contact with the surface. Finally, I apply epoxy to each of the T-slot channels. I apply a liberal coat which seeps into the grooves on the edges and bottom surface of the T-slot channel. I do not apply any epoxy to the outside one inch edge of the T-slot channel where it will overhang on the MDF disc. I lightly press the T-channel slots in place and then use a clean rag to wipe off the excess glue that seats out. I next attach the 3 4 inch wide wood strips over the T-slot channel, using care so that these wood strips only come in contact with the T-slot channel and not the MDF disc. I then clamp the T-slot channels in place with a spring clamp. I use the same process to glue up the remaining T-slot channels in the remaining disc. This completes this video on the construction of these jigs for producing my uh, laminate disc sets for my Dizzy Bolt projects. And I think I have enough now for my, all my future projects. If you prefer you can coat these surfaces with some polyurethane or shellac or even varnish to, to seal the surface, but I always use these plastic disc between my jig and my laminate pieces and even on top of my laminate pieces when I'm gluing. And that just keeps glue off the surface of my jigs and keeps everything nice and clean. The next video in this series, which will be video number three, will describe how these L brackets are made in my shop using a mini mill. I know many of our viewers don't have access to a mini mill, so these L brackets will actually be available on our website. They consist of a a brass key that slides into the channel on the jig, a brass thumb screw which locks it in place, and a quarter inch by two inch tall metal pin which is used to align the edges of your disc as they're being glued up. The final video in this series, which will be video number four, will describe how these jigs are actually used to glue up your laminate disc for making your Disney Bowl projects. I'll also be demonstrating how these same jigs can be used to glue up segmented rings for making segmented uh, woodwork turning projects.